happens to me almost every single year. Winter comes along, I struggle, I film a lot indoors because it's so cold outside. I'm miserable most of the time making videos if it is outside. Then comes spring, I film a lot outside. Then comes summer and all I wanna do is just sauna and swim and just hang out, relax, enjoy the warm weather. And then we go back into winter and I think, why didn't I film more? Why didn't I film more when it was warm, when it was nice outside? And then it just keeps repeating that same cycle. It's a vicious cycle. Does uh, the one wheel count as a longboard or skateboard? Hope I'm not breaking the, the rules here. So uh, practice makes perfect, right? And you want to be a filmmaker. And I assume that you want to be a good filmmaker. But what the heck do you practice when filmmaking? What are like the drills? What do you do? You know, it's kind of obvious in sports. If you're a basketball player, you know, you do some free throws and three pointers. You do drills, sports. But what are you supposed to do in filmmaking to practice? What are the drills? Just like with sports, I guarantee you, if you practice every single day, you will get way better at filmmaking. Guaranteed, there, there's full guarantees on this. So here are some of the things that I would do to practice, and these are the things you wanna get so comfortable with that you can do them without even thinking about it. You don't have to think about what you're doing. It just happens autonomously almost. And some of these feel pretty stupid to practice. It seems almost too simple that you should be practicing something a, a little bit harder or something a little bit high level. But it's a lot of times the small things that separate the pros from the noobs. Especially these first two, you're, you're gonna kind of brush them off and laugh them off and like skip to the further ones. But these are important. Number one, you wanna practice setting up your gear. You wanna be able to set up your camera gear, your camera, your lens, your microphone. If you're using a tripod or gorilla pod or monopod or gimbal, you wanna be able to set that up really quickly and efficiently and know what you're doing. I would even recommend before doing a shoot, always do a practice setup of your gear. A, just to be you know familiar with the gear that you're using and then B, to make sure that you have everything that you need. Nothing is worse than forgetting a piece of gear. So you wanna be able to set up your gear really quickly, efficiently. You don't wanna waste time setting up your gear. So know your gear inside and out and how to set it up. Pro tip here also, if you're handing off, let's say a lens or anything important, do not let go of that lens until the other person has said something like, got it, or whatever your, your words are for that confirmation. Got it, mine, 10-4, secured, Delta Bravo, hoo -ah! Don't let go until they say, got it. You do not wanna drop a lens. This has never happened to me before, ne never. Number two, what I would do is mess up all your settings on your camera, your shutter, your ISO, everything, f-stop, frame rates, and then see how quickly can you set it up to the right settings. This is really important and it should especially be one of those autonomous things that you don't really need to think about. Nobody wants to work with that guy who's on set like, hold on guys, I'm, I'm just gonna get this set up um, okay, we wanna shoot at F18. Okay, and then um, the shutter needs to be um, a double the frame rates. Okay, so that's 24 times two, that would make it 48. Oh no, wait, my, my camera doesn't do four, fifth, I get 50, okay. Oh shoot, I'm in I'm 30 frames per second. Okay, I gotta, gotta go. Nobody wants to work with that guy and you're just wasting time. And depending on the shoot, let's say you're shooting a wedding or something, you don't have time to do that. You literally do not have time. You're gonna miss all of the important shots. So make sure you know how to set the settings really quickly. You know the menus inside and out. Practice this, actually practice this. Mess all of the settings up and then get it back to the right settings. And number three, and this one is really, really important. Unfortunately, we can't always rely on autofocus. So you need to be really good with manual focus. And you wanna practice that. You wanna actually go out and just 
practice focusing on different things. You wanna try racking from one object to the next. You wanna, you wanna track moving objects if it's moving closer to you. You wanna track that. You wanna be really consistent and really good at manual focusing. That's probably one of the biggest reasons for having to do retakes if you're shooting, let's say, a commercial or something. Missing focus is a prime reason to have to do another take. Everything else could be good, but then you just missed focus a little bit. So you wanna practice focusing. This is actually one of those things that I would practice a lot on. It's even good to kind of practice uh, guessing how far the distance is from, from your camera, you and the object that you're trying to focus on. This is actually something that pro focus pullers, people that are just doing the focus, uh, are really good at. They know exactly how far something is. So, you know, that tree back there, it is uh, four meters and, and 20 centimeters over there. And then they're literally super close uh, in their guesses. And that helps them to focus because you can look at even the, the distance markings on the lens while you're manual focusing. Number four, practice moving shots. Moving shots are some of the most difficult shots to get in cinematography filmmaking. So you wanna, if you have a gimbal, you wanna take that gimbal out, practice all the different moves. I, I've told you guys a whole bunch of the different moves that I like to do. Take your friend out, practice those moves over and over and over again until your arms are just burning from holding the gimbal and then do like five more of them. Keep practicing them day in, day out. Practice those moves. I guarantee you will be a better filmmaker if you just practice those camera movements. The number five, this one's a little bit trickier. Try and practice finding compositional elements. For example, we have a bunch of different lines and, and stuff going on. Try to see what are the things that you could use, or, or for example, this, this little area right here, you could use this as like a frame, like, this could be a good frame right here, you know? Framing framing your subjects in here. Practice going into a new space and seeing what are the compositional techniques that you could use, what are the elements that would be really handy for your film. You need to be really quick about this, especially for certain types of filmmaking. For example, if you're shooting at dock, you don't really have a lot of time to kind of scope out and be like, oh, I wonder what, what the best shots and just trying out, you know, trial by error if there's a good shot. You need to be able to look around, see where there's leading lines or symmetry or frames anything that you can use to better tell your story. And same goes for lighting. You need to go into a new location and be able to see what lights are there. So practice walking into a room and seeing where is the light coming from? Is there overhead lights? Is there windows? Where is the light coming into that space? And how could you use those? How can you key light with those? Do you backlight with that? Figure out, can you modify things? Practice this. It's really, really important, especially again in something like documentary filmmaking, you need to be really, really quick at seeing where the lights are. And then lastly, one of the best ways to practice is to just get some work. Get some work, whether you're doing it for cheap or for free, maybe in the beginning, but get on some video shoots, whether it's a wedding or a commercial or an internal film for a company, anything. For me, some of the best places to practice in the beginning were at my church because there really wasn't any pressure and I was doing it for free. And then probably the second best place to practice was weddings. Weddings are a really, really good place to practice because you're having to do so much at once. You're having to set up your camera, set up the settings. You're gonna have to go into a location and see where the light's coming from. You need to move really fast and think on your feet. Everything has to work really, really seamlessly and streamlined. You can't just be you know, looking at your camera for five minutes. You have to be getting those shots. And hey, why not get paid while you're learning about filmmaking? That, that's definitely the most ideal situation. But to better practice your skills, it really helps to have a purpose or a reason to get out there and film. So I highly recommend that you just try to get some work. Practice first, setting up your camera gear, setting up your settings, manual shots, practice moving shots, uh, find those compositional elements, figure out the lighting, practice all of those things, and then go out and get some work and really put them into practice. You would never ever go and play in an NBA game without practicing a crap ton before. 
So why would you ever go on a shoot without practicing a ton before it? So many people say that they're aspiring filmmakers and they kind of just keep repeating that over and over again, but they don't go out there and actually make films. And that's what makes you a filmmaker in the end. So practice a ton and then just get out there. Don't be scared, just get out there. All right, what are you waiting for? I guarantee you, if you start practicing like an hour a day right now, after a month, you're gonna be a way better filmmaker. After six months, you're gonna be 100%, well, I don't know exactly what percent, but you're gonna be a lot better of a filmmaker. Uh, this is literally one of those guarantees that you can count on every single time. Just start practicing. Stop watching this video already. Go practice. Wait, are you still here? What the heck are you doing? Go practice already. Still here? Stop it. Stop it. Get out. 